This is the Steven Owl, and yes, we are back with another Batman 66 episode review, and today we'll be reviewing the episode Penguin Sets a Trend. So without further ado, let's get into the review. When we last left off Batman and Robin, they were tired and about to be essentially thrown across the city in a giant catapult with cameras strapped to their leg to record the event. The usual opening credits, and we get back to where they are. Batman is trying to calculate where they will land, and is using a, essentially a device to communicate to the Batmobile to get there just in time to prevent them from being splat. They get thrown in the air, and the Batmobile then drives off, and essentially catches them, well, catches them by shooting out essentially a trampoline to prevent them from getting squashed. However, when they go back, they then go to Police Commissioner Gordon's office and explain the whole thing, but they realize if they arrest Penguin, he could ne he he would never give up with the location to the armories and they could lose it forever. So the most logical choice of action is to go back to do some more undercover work at the Penguin's production company and still and still want to participate in the movie. Even though Penguin objects, he is convinced when he hears a sob a, a sob song of him Batman wanting to be in the movie. I'm cracking up just how absurdity it is, and I'm struck and I don't understand how the hell Adam West could keep a straight face with that. But with that, Penguin is convinced and agrees to let them still participate in the movie. Just as that's happened, we see Marsha and Aunt Hilda essentially, sh you know, fishing for old toads. I'm laughing at every minute of it, and it's fun. Marsha and Aunt Hilda are the best duo. As that's happening, Batman and Robin are essentially are placed in these sort of armors for a scene that Penguin says they are about to shoot. What ends up happening is whilst they're in that armor, they're then... A magnet is then fired where they are essentially lifted up high above and essentially are going to be left there. And the penguin and his crew plan to go somewhere with some of his crew dressed up in the armor that the penguin had stolen in the previous episode and plans to pull off some kind of, well, theft. Anyway, penguin and his crew leave and Batman does manage to figure a way to get out of the armor. Uh, well, not the armor, but to desensitize the magnet, which releases him. He and Robin then head their way, where it turns out to the Gotham to a local Gotham City military base. We then see Penguin there at the base, and he's using him as as a big producer to charm the two main officers working there to possibly do a career in movies. I like how Penguin is playing on the manipulation of the two. As I said, he wants to shoot a scene there for his uh, for his film, though. And what happens is, the Penguin's goons then burst into office, to a certain office, Office X, where they steal some plans, files, and make their way out. Now, courtesy of the armor, it is bulletproof, so the bullets don't hit them. They then make their way out and drive, and drive away in a van, where Batman and Robin arrive, ask what's happened, where's Penguin, and then they start chasing him. Now, courtesy of the armor's weight within the Penguin's getaway vehicle, the tire explodes. A uh, tire explodes where they're forced to park the car, quickly get out, and run on foot. Penguin orders his men to take the plans and run back to the hideout, while Penguin runs away with a dynamic duo, knocking them out whilst they were off guard. Just as, but just as that happens, a garbage truck rolls up, and then he pays for them to pick up, essentially, the bodies, which he claims is garbage, to be taken to the garbage dump, which they, they are, which will then, where they'll be then compacted into this garbage crusher, and essentially that is our cliffhanger, and we do see the garbage crush, and that's the cliffhanger for the episode. I think it really changes in regards to the main cast. Things are kind of still the same. Chief O'Hara and G Gordon are still bumbling in it, and Batman and Robin are still trying to investigate what Penguin's up to. And the fact they still try to convince Penguin to still let them on in their movie uh, work in their film, despite the fact clearly uh, Penguin clearly kind of knows they're onto them. And despite the fact them doing under being technically undercover, we don't see them do some actual undercover work. That's my real main. That's something I really noticed, and I thought it was a complete missed opportunity. Anyway, let's get into the let's get into the villains of the piece. Burgess Meredith as the Penguin stealing every scene he's in. Him thinking himself to be this big time movie producer is really great and really feet and I like how they're really feeding his ego despite the fact I'm feeling that maybe this three-parter wasn't well written. I can't deny that Burgess Meredith is really making it work courtesy of this for his character. 
He's doing an absolutely phenomenal job with the role. And and he's and I also like how Burgess Marathon is doing a bit of comedic moments in this episode. Something I think we rarely see him do as he's more serious half the time. But I really like it. I like they really giving us every moment of it. Unlike in the previous three parter, the second accomplice usually for the middle episode uh, the, the second part of the three parter is never here. But here Marsha at least is. That was very brief and it's a very little moment where she's with Anne Hilda. I still find it fun. I'm still having gripes with her character. But I can't help but the second part, I'm actually really starting to enjoy her a bit. Again, my gripes will still forever be with Marsha's character, but I can't deny that Carol, that Caroline Jones is making it work. And I love every minute of it. Anne Hilda, still great, still phenomenal, lovely, and arguably one of my favourite bits about the Marsha character. She's really fun, and it's kind of also sad, because I know that by the time this three-part is over, this will be the last time we'll be seeing her and Marsha. Penguin Sets a Trend is kind of a different episode for a three for a three-parter. I think this is the first time, other than the Zelda, the Zelda the Great episodes, this is probably the first time we've had an episode in a long time where there's no bat fight. So it kind of feels a little bit out of place, but it feels, but it's also different, so I don't really know what to make of it. I'm stuck whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, and I guess it's up to you wh whether you consider it a good thing or a bad thing. Penguin sets a trend. Uh, an episode, I'm not really sure what to make of it, but tune in next time when we re review the third part to this three-parter. So until then, tune in for the, the same Stephen Hour, the same Stephen channel, ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.